Hey, what's going on everybody? Hopefully you guys are having an awesome weekend and an awesome day. So finally got off of work and I'm just doing my rounds in the room and then I just kind of stopped and figured maybe you guys want to see what's going on. Um, checking out the snakes just really fast, seeing how they're doing, seeing if they have water, seeing if they pooped, seeing if they're even hopefully alive, which is the most important thing. So I work 10 hour shifts, which is the majority of the day. I always come home. First thing I do is uh, come to the snake room, make sure the heat is right and just make sure everybody is doing well. So my main focus right now on all of my snakes is Mountain Dew. So um, you all know that she's been sick. She's doing better. I have to clean out her cage. Um, so we can kind of see here and it's a little dark, but her skin's looking a lot better. She's on her second meal that she's kept down. We can see how nice and gentle she is. But since she was sick, giving her some medication, um, this is her second meal in two weeks that she's kept down. We fed her, I think three days ago. So if she would have regurgitated, she would have already. So I know the paper towels are kind of dirty, but since she's been sick and she's been regurgitating, I just have set her up on that shelf right there. And I didn't touch her at all. So there's a little bit of blood in there from the bird that I cut in half. And that's just what, I mean, none of that, the blood is from her herself. But um, so I just left her in there, didn't touch anything, kind of peeked through just to make sure she didn't regurgitate. And so far she has not, which is awesome. So she's my main focus right now. Um, just to make sure she's healthy, alive, doing very, very well. And, but you know what I'm saying? I'm not neglecting any of the other ones. She's just sick, so all my attention is going to her right now. But I'm just going to show you guys just a couple of, I got to clean that out. A couple of snakes here that I can actually pick up with one hand while holding the camera. And this is my, the Jungle Hypo Pastel, which is always, always, always looking really nice. Nice and bright on the tail. She has a lot of pink on her sides, which I doubt will show up on this GoPro, but I really like that. Um, the markings on top of her, 2019. Very, very nice snake. Uh, can't wait to see what the future holds with her. But pretty much this video is gonna be about uh, peaches. The Burmese Python. I just want to show you guys what's going on with some of these other snakes. So, looked at a majority of them already. Um, all my ball pythons are pretty much pooping out right now. So, some of the cages are pretty gross. Clean out a few of them. And man, some of these ball pythons poop worse than the anacondas or even the Burmese as of right now. But obviously, when they get older, it'll be a little bit different. So, we're bringing the light around here so we can actually see some of the cool markings. On him, my only male in the room, my only male boa, I should say. So this is my snow, got him from John Chosmer. And I'm pretty sure he's having a, more of these uh, being born in the next couple of months. So be ready for that. But man, really, really nice markings. And I can't wait until he grows up and he changes a little bit of the colorations on him. Really nice whites, a little bit of purple um, in the colorations. Can't really see the saddles very well, but that's where, and I would show you, but she's buried, where the moon glow comes in. You can really see the saddles because of the hypo that's added into the moon glows, which makes it super nice, really, really pretty. Really nice effects on them. Um, and then when they get older, the moon glows do get really, really, and I think the snows do too. They get really yellow and then the, the tails and then the saddles get vibrant white, which is super cool. Just really, really nice looking. Uh, we'll check out this one real quick. Since I've cleaned her cage and obviously she dumped the water out. And then this stuff, uh, I guess I, I missed some. But this stuff is really holding humidity or the water very well, which is making the humidity really high, which is good for shedding. I haven't really noticed anything um, with respiratory, but just keeping my eye on them, making sure they're doing well. And this is my lesser or butter clown with a heart shape 
on the top of her head, which is pretty cool. We can see that. There we go. And she's actually pretty active, which is which is nice. So the tubs are definitely getting a little cramped for them, but the solution for that should be here in the next month, I hope. And then we can see Matthew over here being active, which is really good and really exciting because I mean before, and I don't keep on talking about her, but before when she was sick, like she would just lay there and multiple times I thought she was just dead because she had no energy at all. But seeing her move around like that is just makes makes me happy and makes me excited because she's doing very well. And then I weighed this guy, the one male that I do have, and he is almost up to 400 grams. And then 2020, this is my um, banana clown. And I really want to pair him just for the fun of it to my big female pastel. And then I would just get a bunch of head clowns, which would be cool. I mean, it might be a first pairing, um, which could happen here in the next couple of months. Just to kind of figure out what's going on with pairings and uh, just trying it out, see if I like it. Nothing serious. Uh, let's get into um, checking out this Burmese. So she's back there and I'll, I'll, I'll get her out here in a second. But so I got the water area over here, her main water area. And then a couple of days before I knew she was going to shut out, I added that water area as well. Um, she shut out. She doesn't have any stock shed, but it all came out, you know, ripped and torn and stuff like that. And here's her, her tail piece. And then there's various pieces of her shed lined um, up like that in, in the bottom. So I kind of pushed all the uh, the branches away just so I could get her out from underneath here easier. It sucks to say, but she is way too small for this enclosure. Um, I might have to end up putting a bunch of mulch in here like I've done over here with uh, the green anacondas. And it's like 3 or $4 a bag um, at Lowe's. So it's not expensive. It, it, it's not, you know, it's not a bad thing to get. And maybe that'll bump the humidity up in here other than the two water sources. But I really don't want to put her into like a 4 by 2 Even though I think she needs to be because this is way too big. And I thought the Burmese would grow. I thought she would have been a faster grower um but her being a very very and then there's more shed right there but it all came off of her i didn't have to peel any of it off and the most important stuff came off the eye caps came off and all this stuff down by the tail came off so that's the most important stuff to get off of them because that can do the most damage as they're growing with stuck shed on them um so we'll get her out and I did have her out a little bit ago, but she's always, 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 always fired up. Let's get her out. Hopefully she doesn't take a swing at me. So we can hear her getting um, kind of in her attitude. So we'll swing the camera around when I can get her situated. So here she is. And she's definitely, definitely gaining some size. And she's a she was born November 2019. So um, I think I'm right on track with her on the size of where she should be on a good feeding schedule every 10 to 14 days on a small rat. And I have been feeding her some quail as well. Um, you know, I, I do see some two-year-old and she's going to be, yeah, she'll be two at the end of this year, but I've seen some two-year-olds that have already hit eight feet. So trying to keep her on the leaner side on the, um, not the smaller, not the smaller size, because obviously if you're purposely keeping them small, then you're neglecting their health and then their natural size of them. But they don't need to be fatty. And that's my goal to not make them fatty, just to make them look good. You know, 13, 14, 15, 16 feet as a good solid body on her. In the same way with my anacondas too. You can get the anacondas at, you know, 16 feet. They're going to weigh a lot. They're going to be about 100 pounds, 150 pounds. But you don't need them to be sloppy fat. And when you hold on to them, there's nothing but, you know, 
a bunch of body fat on it. And then they have heart problems and liver problems and all that stuff in the mid eye. But man, her colors are gorgeous, like insanely awesome. And so as far as I know, I don't know a lot about the Burmese, but the pearls are the um, the hypo and the albino put together. And then she is half for green granite. I don't know what percent, but she could be 100. She could be 66. I have no idea. I really don't have any plans of breeding the Burmese just because that's a lot of work and you get a lot of eggs. And if you don't sell them, then you're kind of stuck with them. But she is going to get fed um, here very soon. And then on the next video, I might feed her in the next video. And then I have to feed all the big bows and her. So that'll be exciting. So just want to show you guys what's going on in the room just a little bit. And I mean, I got a ton of snakes that I still have to go through. I mean, almost all the ball pythons are um, digested and they're pooping out all their food. So I got to go through and clean them. And then I got to feed them again, probably here this weekend, which would be exciting. So it's nonstop cleaning and feedings and handling and bonding with these animals. And I don't think her colors have faded at all, which is really good. I, I've seen adult pearls out in the sun and um, they are super vibrant. Like they look really, really good. Uh, they don't really they don't really fade out on their colors at all like an albino would and they really keep the nice yellows on top and then they keep the nice whites down on the side so we can see her body language right now she's kind of timid she's puffed up a lot in her midsection just because she probably wants to strike at me but we're bonding well and if i if i hold her for another 20 minutes uh she'll calm down and that's my plan is to be able to take her out and um, obviously she's probably going to hiss at me until she gets a little bit bigger, but it is what it is. So good shed on her. I would say it's a good shed. No, it's not. It's not bad. At least she got most of the stuff off or all of it off. It's just in pieces. But really haven't shown her very much is because she's been in shed for the last week or week and a half. So just wanted to show her off to you guys. She's alive. She's doing well and she looks extremely nice i think but um that's it so nothing exciting just kind of giving you guys just a little update on what's going on and uh yeah that's it i mean i could do this these videos a little bit more just going around showing here and there on the the snakes a little bit of handling but you guys let me know what you guys want to see because um i just i just guess and i'm, I'm gonna go live here soon um hopefully in the next couple of days Hopefully you guys can join on that and hopefully you guys have a safe weekend. I know a lot of stuff's opening back up. So stay safe out there and I'll see you guys on the next video.